Will we get to see Stella's background or will she just remain the villain? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so you know what's fun about Stella? Short answer, yes. Um, we do get into her backstory. Whether or not it's soon, I definitely can't say, but we do. Um, because I think her position is really interesting. And what I like about Stella is she is a villain um, and she's a pretty bad person, but she does have a perspective. And you know what's funny? I, most people have kind of seen it, you know, where, you know, she was also in this arranged marriage and she didn't ask for it either. And I think that that's a valid, you know, perspective. Um, so, yes, we do. We do explore it. And I'm I'm really excited for that because I do think it's a um, a, a plot point. And the, the whole Goetic family to me is such a like we haven't gotten too into it yet. We've only seen it from Stolas's perspective. And um, there's a whole nother side like there's her side. There's in Drillfus, There's um, there's the Kings. There's other characters. Um, we meet. He's already been revealed, so it's not a spoiler. Um, we meet a new get go at a character named Visago and a bunch of other characters. And I'm really excited in, in as we get further in the show that that side of of the the hell uh, hellborn like world is going to be explored because it's really been interesting to like figure out. And that is part of it is is like her character and her position in this goetic um, society and, you know, why it matters so much to her. So, yes, I, I personally always want to explore the characters, even if they are kind of because she is like one note. But even then, it's like most one note people have kind of are that way because of something. And I I, I hearken it a lot to um Bojack Horseman because that's my favorite series of all time and his mother is a character that's very similar she's incredibly one note she's just full on just like the most cartoonishly abusive mother ever um, but you there's an episode um, where they focus entirely on her backstory um, because she has dementia and it's about her going like her brain like during that and we see the backstory told through this like really stylized like almost dementia mind and it's and it's so funny because everyone was like whoa that just wait a minute she went through and I was like yeah but like they did that in season four like the end of season four so for me like you know it just it felt normal to kind of be like we'll we'll get to it but that's like part of it is that it's not about her it's about it's more about Stolas's perspective but I am really excited to get into the perspectives of other characters because that's Firstly, I I don't want to end the show before we explore almost every major character. Um, and to me, uh, villains are some of the most interesting characters. It's like, but we, but at the same time, she's really fun in the way of her being so specifically one note. Because to me, I also love characters like Cruella Deville, who are just like you don't know why she wants to kill dogs, but she definitely wants to kill dogs because she wants to look good. <laughs> and it's like that's as deep as she gets, you know. And that's still fun and memorable. Um, and so to me, right now, Stella is that because we just love how much fun we can have with how bratty she is. And her in tandem with Andrilfus, who we'll see more of as the show goes on, is just they're just a very fun uh, villainous duo. Um, but yeah, I, I again, long I'm very long winded with my answers. But yes, we will explore <laughs> Stella's backstory eventually. Do you have a process for when it's time or is it just whenever it feels right to you? Well, again, it's it's in this like kind of block out process that we did. So we what we did and it, it always shifts around because sometimes as we're writing, we realize, oh, this episode actually should probably come before this one. But we do for the most part for the rest of Hell of a it's ma it's mapped out because I know how many episodes um, I wanted the show to be 50 episodes total. So that means that seasons three and four are very long. Um, so they're going to take longer to make and they're going to be really complicated, but they're like really solid story arcs. And um, because of that, because I wanted this like a set amount of episodes, all of them are basically mapped out like all of season three even though we haven't written the second half are all planned out we like just the have plot to, lines yes yeah, so like the outlines are, are done and so we have that for the whole show and so but that helps because we get to go 
oh, this is the episode where the Stella storyline will be in. But then as we're writing, we might go, actually, it might be more impactful if we know her storyline in this episode because then this episode hits harder. Or You know what I mean? So we move things around like that, like these kind of beats or these storylines. But for the most part, the episodes are kind of locked in. So we go like, okay, this is when this happens. So this other event has to happen before that and, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, for the most part, we have it planned out like ahead because we want the story to flow as well as we can make it, you know, or at least or as based on our judgment, you know. You're such a wizard. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> About your curating skills. How do you recruit all these amazing people? Is there anyone memorable that sticks out? Well, there's so, I mean, we have so many rock stars. I... I never want to like point people out because I also am like, but everyone else is doing such a good job too. But you know, I mean, I, I guess though what I will do is I'll, I'd love to highlight some of the people who I just feel like have gone so like above and beyond um, and are just so passionate. Um, and uh, right now I'm really vibing really hard with, we have a, a board artist named Samantha Ames who uh, just is such a, um, a trooper. We gave her some of the hardest songs on Has Been season two, and she made some of the coolest visuals for them that I've ever seen. Like, I was like, oh my God, like, what? Like, oh my, how we're gonna, but yes, like, yeah, like, and she also did um, Just Look My Way, the music video. She boarded the entire thing, and that music video is so beautiful. And just, I just, I really love the versatility that she has and how like just passionate she is about the character, how much she nails their kind of personalities and and everything and sets this amazing groundwork for then the like the amazing animators to come in and bring it to life and um so so shout out shout out to her um there's so many people though like you know i i could list a hundred like again that's the only reason I'm I'm saying that person is because just like as of this second, just I've just been blown away and I'm so thankful of, of how hard she worked on like a very difficult assignment. So, you know, thank you, Apes. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, it's it, 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 we have so many like incredible animators and so many just I mean, the cleanup team also like is just it's a hard job. It's a it's a very and it's usually the most ha thankless position um and i really appreciate um how much passion's put into that and like just that whole team like shout out to that whole team and and um sammy and and everyone running it like it's just like it's it's so so much work to make these animated shows so i it's like everyone is a rock star on on these shows but um, and I also like my leadership team, like they take so much on and they have so much responsibility on them to like make everything work, but they're all like incredible at it. And I have so much trust in them. So yeah, I, and, and the other part of the question was how we like bring people in. I mean, nowadays that's more my leadership team. I trust that to the, every department has an incredible lead and they're the ones that look at the reels and determine who's going to be like joining or who we might test um and then do you give your final say or do, are nowadays they... i trust them to kind of do that um because again i'm just so if if things had to wait on me we'd actually like probably have mon many more like what we call bottlenecks which is just like slowdowns that happen because like there's a dam you know like they're just if we have to wait for viv like her schedule is a, a nightmare and oh my god and this has to move so um so i'm trusting my team more at spindle horse to just kind of make approvals without me and I really appreciate that and so there's so many new people that I'm like whoa this person's so good and they're like yeah this is a new like a new animator and I'm like oh that they're great you know so it's like it's it's awesome like it's very rewarding like in a way I'm sad that I don't personally like curate it as much as I used to but it's part of growth you know did young Viv always focus on having a solid team like that I mean honestly as a kid and even in the early days of the of the making my projects, my dream was always to work with friends. Like I was like, oh, I just want to work with my friends. Working with friends is sometimes not the best idea because especially when you're like the boss of a show and then you're working with your friends, 
um, sometimes there's just, you know, conflict of interest and you're like, I don't want to give this person a note because they're like my best friend or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, and what's amazing now is I feel like you can kind of have that. So my recommendation is always an, if you want to work with your friend, make sure you guys have a really good relationship because it might be tested. What you what I found was working with people who became my friends. And I think that's a little healthier because everyone kind of understands their role still, but you but you come you there's a camaraderie that's created. Um and and you and you really like bond through the process and then you meet as people and you go actually you're like the coolest person ever and so my best friends that I have now um I met through my production and we actually were all in different stages of it like I was the head of it and and Sam was a was my background lead and then Sky was um uh, an animator and then we like connected so strong and in our our drive and our passion all matched each other and so and then they became like sam and sky are like inseparable so like we just connected as like this unit and uh we've been like really inseparable ever since and they're now my art director and my animation director respectively and it's so nice so like i don't i i don't say like don't work with your friends it's just like when you have friendships like pre-existing relationships and then you go let's make a thing together it's like it's like having like like a, a child or a pet it's like and then there's all these things of like who you know who does what and who and and oh you made a mistake but I can't play you know what I mean like there's I don't know maybe that's a bad analogy but like just it gets complicated because sometimes you have to like come down on someone or you have to like you know it, it, it's production is stressful so yeah I I think it's it's best to like meet people and and have everyone understand what their roles are versus just being like, let's work with each other and make something. But it also can be really fun. So I guess, you know, it's it's depends. But I feel like I learned a lot of lessons with that. So with them being your inner circle and your friends outside, is your downtime still involved with the show and animation? Yeah, I will say there's probably a lot more like work talk out of work that it's just, just it, it is it's fun like it's it's always fun but sometimes I'm like maybe like we we all like need to like like we all like collectively are like workaholics so we're like constantly talking about work and part of me is like maybe we need to get better about that <laughs> um just because you know there's so much else going on and um but what's that's what's nice is that like um there is so much more other like like we like especially with with me and Sky, like uh, me, Sky and Sam, we do have interests shared outside of work. So it's like really nice. And obviously, like other people I've met on the show, um, who I'm really close with, um, like Brandon and and Adam and Lyle and and Monica. And there's so many other people, but like um, people I work with very closely a lot we have so much like i've known um so lyle and monica are respectively are uh, a new writer for season three is lyle and monica has been a voice actress for me forever she was in the original has been pilot and um she does a lot of incidental characters on hell of a and she's just she now she works um prod at my studio so she's like been with me forever but i've known her since like 20 like 13 like oh, like wow. or, or or earlier she's one of the people i've known like the mo the longest and she's like one of the funniest most like kind people i've ever known so like you know so like i don't actually i retract it work with your friends just work with your good <laughs> friends not your shitty friends that's my advice actually <laughs> Is it possible to get all seven sins talk in the same room? I want to really bad. Like my my dream is to cross them over. So yeah, because the only the one two. missing. Yeah, the only ones missing. So short answer, yes, because in hell of a we see all we see six of them, but the missing one is Lucifer. And I would kill to have Lucifer in there with them, too. But obviously, because Lucifer is and has been, it's like a little tricky. But fingers crossed that we'll be able to do that eventually. Because I would that's my dream. Like, I want all seven of them together really bad. But we do see six of them very well. I don't know when this is coming out, but potentially soon. So I'm very excited for that. Is there a story behind the signature black choker for all <laughs> slash most of the female female characters? Honestly, no. Just because I I 
it's so interesting. I have some weird design quirks that are very me oriented. Um, I don't know why. I really like giving a lot of my characters some kind of um, neck accessory. And I didn't even realize this until people started like pointing it out and like joking about it. A lot of my characters have bow ties or chokers or necklaces or something. You subconsciously me, just did all. Yeah. And I, for me, it's honestly because. Uh, one, it actually serves an, a cleanup purpose. Sometimes it's nice to have a separator because usually because they're black, it helps. You can like cut it off and then you can do edits to the body and not worry about the head. You know, it's it's kind of like a cutoff point, which is kind of nice for animation purposes. But for in reality, it's honestly just when I make a design, sometimes when I look at them, I'm just like, they just, I don't know, something's missing. And then I just, this one line, this one little black line, and I go, all right, they look better now. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just this weird quirk of mine. And the same thing with bow ties. I'm like, I'll do design a character, and I'm like, they look okay, but as soon as they have the bow tie on, I'm like, oh, they're cute. I like that. That's yeah. perfect. So I don't know. It's just a weird thing of mine. And it's very self-indulgent because it's it's something I try to avoid with like characters I design for like other projects because I'm like, that's a, it's a me thing. So unless somebody wants something to be very me, I, I try to avoid that. Yeah.